Hey there, and a big welcome to today's Throwback Thursday. And in today's session, we are talking all about value. It's super important for us to understand what our customers see is important so that we can maximize the value that we provide. So keep watching while myself and Pirate Pete take you through it. How do you build value for your customers with your product? I think it's a really important question these days because I think in the past people have talked very much about features and benefits. Have you all heard about that? You've all come across features or value. All right, Tomboy, do you mean tangible value or do you mean something more internally? Both. Because tangible value and internal value it, it, there's a lot of overlap there. And if you get one, you can build the other and vice versa. So we're gonna look right in at those different types of value. So I want to talk about this because say, a lot of people talk about features and benefits. And this has always been a thing in sales. This is a feature, this is the benefit it, op it offers. And quite often salespeople have been so hung up about, this is what it does, this is why it's good. They've started to miss the point really have. I worked in software sales for a long time, missed the point so much. Because the bottom line there was what we we're missing the point was, what was important to our audience. So the first thing you need to think about when you're looking at value is, who is your audience? For your product or service, who is your audience? Once you know what that audience is, then you can start to think about what's of value to them. You can't do it before then. In fact, quite often there are products and services which are reverse engineered. We come up with a great product, a great service, and then start to think, right, who's going to buy that? Oh, right, okay, like, who would buy that? Which I think is a little bit the wrong way around because actually what we should be doing is we should be thinking, great, this is our audience, what would be of value to them? So that's the first thing. Once we know who our audience is, we can then start to think about what they're interested in. And what they're interested in, is, in quite often, is big picture stuff. They're interested in what's in it for them. We're all only interested in ourselves. I hate to say it, but your customer isn't interested in you. They're interested in themselves. They're interested in their own business. They're interested in what's going on there. I don't know who your customer is, but I bet that's what they're thinking about when you're talking to them. So what's in out of use to, their, to your customer? And quite often, those things can be very big pitch, picture. They're interested in, oh, hi. RCWS Richard, hi Richard. Um, they're interested in time, they're interested in saving money, they're interested in what's gonna make them more effective, they're interested in what's gonna get them somewhere new, hi Richard. Um, that This is the sort of thing that they're actually interested in. What they're quite often not interested in is in the minutiae that as salespeople we tend to talk about. So once we've worked out what's important to them, we then need to work out how our product or service speaks to that need. And ideally we do this before we create our product service. Hi, Charlie. Hi, mountain biking. Uh, lots of people hopping in there. And we need to think about how we actually identify what our product can deliver, product or service can deliver based on those key points, things that they see value in, the things that are important to them. And earlier on, um, we had that reference back um, from Tomboy about is this internalized value or tangible value? Well, actually, the first thing's got to be about what they see value in it. Yeah, I'm in Whitley Bay. I totally am. Woohoo! Shout out for Whitley Bay. Um, so, the um, first thing there, what do they think is important to them? Once we know that, we can actually start to look at the messages that we're um, go start going out with. What does your product or service offer in relation to those things? It might do X, it might do Y, it might offer Z, but actually translate it straight back to those big picture items. Let me give you an example. So an example on this might be that um, when we are selling it's my water bottle. Let's say that I'm selling a bottle of water, a bottle of mountain spring water. As a salesperson, I might be really interested in um, the fact that the bottle's reusable. We might be interested in the fact that the water's great. We might be interested from a mountain source. Oh, thanks very much, Charlie. Bye. Um, we might be interested in all of these different things. That's great, but actually, is that what our customer's interested in? Well, they're probably not interested in that. What they're initially interested in when they're looking at a shelf full of things is, is there a bottle of water there? Because they want something to drink. That's a value to them. They're thirsty. So the value that they see is, I'm thirsty and that's going to solve that problem. We've got to speak to that first requirement before we get any further. 
And actually that comes back as well to situation because the other point is here, not just about what's internally important to them, but actually what comes next. What about the situation they're in? What about the environment? So for example, the value of our bottle of water in rainy Whitley Bay um, is it got a completely different value to if we were selling it in the desert in the middle of a drought. There's no water around. How much is this worth then? What is the value to someone of a bottle of water in comparison to someone in rainy Whitley Bay who can get out with tap anytime they want? The value is completely different. Now, the person might be the same, but actually the situation's changed. Yeah, Tiana, exactly. So we've got to really think about speaking to their core values. What is it they're really interested in? We get right down to it. But then we need to reflect on their current situation, uh, what the environment is, what, what the political situation is, a lot of that going on at the moment, and what pressure are they under at the moment? So right this moment in time, there might be people under specific pressures. A um, great example of that is if you look at someone like VAs, for example, great time for them to think, well, when might people be under pressure? They might be under pressure the week leading up to a bank holiday and the, the, the short week straight after a bank holiday because people have got exactly the same period of time but quite often have to deliver the same amount of stuff in that short period of time. So as a VA, the value of what you're actually offering there could be seen to be much greater over that time period than in a normal week. It could be over a period like over a, um, over a bank holiday, over a Christmas holiday, something like that. That is going to increase the need. It's going to increase the value that you can be seen to be offering. And that's really important because if you can identify what's important to your customer, what value it's offering them, and when it is the most important, then that's really good for you to know because at that point in time, you can start to position properly. And yeah, Charlie, so who cares? This is about how what your customer cares about. It's about actually repurposing your message around that. Um, so how are you going to do that? Well, the first thing is, you know what's going to hit their button. You know why it's important to them. You now need to present in this way. And I would suggest that the way that you want to do that is start right from the beginning, from that stepped back process. Don't go into the mind you shy. Don't go into the, that detail, but actually start on that big, big picture. Ask people what's important to them. You know, so how are you actually managing at the moment? How are you dealing with X, Y, Z? You can find out some of that big picture stuff very early on. When you then come to present your product, you can then actually present it with that approach. So for example, you can recognize those pressures, those env the environmental things, the situation that they're actually sitting in. So there's all sorts of stuff actually going on um, in our customer's head that we need to think about. And people aren't interested in being sold to anymore. Some of you will know my views. You can't sell to people anymore. You need to make people want to buy. People need to understand your product. They need to think it's a great offering. And that's when actually you can start to encourage people um, to see what your product can offer them. Um, but hard sales isn't always the way in this day and age because I think people are really turned off to that. I think especially in the UK, um, that's something that we're not really big on anymore. So once you start to talk about value, you can start to talk big picture. How are you saving time at the moment? Is that working for you? Um, where do you find yourself stuck for time? You know, that's something that we actually specialize in servicing people um, around or supporting people around. So you need to present that value. So the first thing is to start those open conversations. Listen to what they see as being of value. Then you need to start to actually reframe back to the customer. Her and Peter Tangers were out. I'm going to tell you one thing about reframing before I go, though. So to reframe... Remember that what you need to do is you need to listen to what they say and you need to mirror that back to people. So if they're saying things like, I know Parrot Pete's gone, this is what happens. If they're saying to you, time's really tight because it's a bank holiday, a great way to actually... <laughs> he goes off twice. I haven't quite got my head around that. Um, a great way to actually reframe that is to come back to them and actually say, right, well, from what you've said, you're really busy, time's really of a premium. For all those reasons, I don't want to take up more of your time, but what I would like to say is that we can support you in that. And we can actually support you in that with our product and service, which would save you X amount of time 
I'd love the opportunity to talk about it. So I'm actually reframing back using exactly the, the, the sort of pressure that they've given me about what they've actually said. You know, this is where I'm struggling. But it's only by recognizing that our product or service can speak to that value that we can actually make that um, connection. Yeah, Mark, he's really persistent. So if you enjoyed that video, remember to hit the button to subscribe, ding the bell to be notified, and until next time, be salesastic. <laughs>